welcome to Diabetes Connections in the News. I'm Stacey Sims, and these are the top diabetes stories and headlines of the past seven days. We go live on social media first, and then all sources linked up at diabetes-connections.com when this airs as a podcast. The news is brought to you by the world's worst diabetes mom, real life stories of parenting a child with type 1 diabetes, winner of best new nonfiction at the American Book Fest, and named a Book Authority Best Parenting Book, available in paperback, ebook, or audiobook at Amazon.com. In the news this week, people who recover from a mild case of COVID-19 appear to have an increased risk for subsequent new onset type 2 diabetes, but not other types of diabetes. This is from a big new study in Germany, and it lines up with previous studies of more seriously ill patients with COVID-19 who had increased risk of type 2 in the months following. This was a big study, more than 35,000 patients, no prior history of diabetes. The risk of developing type 2 increased by 28% if the person had COVID, again, even a mild case. The researchers say anybody who tested positive for COVID needs to be aware of this and get screened for diabetes in the months and years following. A big new study that, interestingly, talks about the CGM as a telehealth device. This study looked at how doctors continued to care for children with type 1 before and after the first year of the COVID pandemic. The use of CGMs increased significantly among those with non-commercial insurance from 24% in 2019 to 35% by the end of 2020. Another finding in the same study, those with higher A1Cs, racial minorities, and those with non-commercial insurance were more likely to have high rates of DKA. But the implementation of telehealth and CGMs increased parental oversight, which they say resulted in better care at home and lower than expected hospitalization rates. I want to dig in a little deeper here because a lower hospitalization rate during the first year of the COVID pandemic overall was found to be tied to a lot of fear about going to a hospital during that time. Swiss pump maker Ipsomed announces the software they'll use for their automated insulin delivery system. Ipsomed will partner with Cam Diab's Cam APS app. The launch will start in select major countries in Europe with other territories to follow over the course of 2022. This includes a hybrid closed loop like Omnipod 5 and Control IQ, as well as smartphone control. It is compatible with Dexcom's G6. They're going to start on Android, then roll out onto iOS. Ipsomed is partnering with Lilly to come to the US. We've had them on the show before talking about this, and they hope to submit to the FDA this year. The FDA is due to make a decision on teplizumab by August 17th. This is a drug that has been shown to delay type 1, and last year the FDA turned down Prevention Bio, asking for a resubmission with more information. The company is also running the Phase 3 PROTECT trial of teplizumab. That's in newly diagnosed type 1 diabetes patients. They hope to expand the indications for the drug. More study underway into the tuberculosis vaccine as a treatment for type 1. This is Dr. Denise Faustman's lab, and they're recruiting 150 teens with type 1 for pediatric clinical trials. Faustman's work is controversial because her studies have been small, and many experts say they don't show significant improvement. But Faustman says the vaccine appears to help patients with type 1 by altering the immune system, and that even though nobody in her trials is off of insulin, there is improvement. Well, if you are watching live, today is the last day to back the Kickstarter for Type 1 the Movie. We talked about this on last week's podcast episode. Noah Averbach Katz is an actor who lived with Type 1 and is making a movie where diabetes is front and center. Since Noah and his wife are on Star Trek Discovery, that community has jumped in to really amplify this. It has been great to see, and he is well over his goal. If you're watching or hearing this after March 23rd, you can follow the link anyway to stay up to date on the project. I did donate to this. and I'm so excited to see how it all turns out. All right, on this week's long format episode, we are doing a deep dive into stem cell research with the folks at Viasite. They're working on two fronts now, encapsulation and gene editing with CRISPR. Next week, you'll hear from JDRF about the new nonprofit insulin that they have backed. Why will this effort from Civica Rx be different? We'll talk about it. You can listen wherever you get your podcasts. And that is in the news for this week. If you like it, please share it. Thanks so much for joining me. I'll see you back here soon. Diabetes Connections is a production of Stacey Sims Media. All rights reserved, all wrongs avenged.